Good morning. Welcome to Dog on the Plot. And what a glorious morning it is. It is absolutely lovely. At the moment, it is 23 and a half degrees in here. And oh my God, it just makes you feel like you can do so much. Um, I'm going to crack on today. Sorry, quick change of uh, direction because the gimbal and the microphone decided to give up the ghost there. They're now on charge and they will be back. Um, what was I saying? Yes, so I'm going to crack on. There's lots of jobs to do. Um, but I didn't think when I got up this morning that I would be able to do much because it was a cold and frosty morning and I, I nipped outside to capture it. birds are continuing to sing now but uh, the frost has gone and um, there's, yeah there's so much that I want to really get on with today. Uh, some of it includes pruning which doesn't sound that exciting but actually I've got something quite interesting to do with the pruning so say, stay tuned for that. Um, I've also got things to pot on and prick out so we've got the lettuce, the rocket, the chilies, the aubergines or eggplants, the peppers, the sweet peppers. So there's quite a lot to be getting on with. And because it's so lovely and warm in the greenhouse, um, I would like to work in here, but I can't because it's a mess. <laughs> you cannot move in this greenhouse. So my first job of the weekend is to try and get this in some kind of order so that then we can get on with the good stuff. second time lapse for you was um, about three hours for me and uh, I got loads done so this looks way better uh, not perfect but at least everything has a spot and there's room to move in here now but I also did some of the compost I cleared some of the lean to once you get started you know just need that bit of momentum don't you anyway I did stop I had lunch made a cup of tea. Uh, I did just want to point out these. So last year I bought some greenhouse staging. Um, where is it now? It's probably at the back of the garden. It's being used. But it was, um, I think it was on offer at Argos for £35 for two, um, I think it was a double set of, of greenhouse staging. And it was fine. It's like, you know, the fairly flimsy stuff that does the job. Um, but I wanted some more this year and I decided instead to go for a shoe rack that I found on Amazon. So it's less than 20 quid for two and there's three shelves and the shelves are just the right size to fit four of the Charles Dowding CD60 trays. Perfectly fits four of them in a row. Um, and if you're someone like me who uses these mushroom trays, it fits three of those perfectly in a row too. Um, so yeah, top tip, I'll link it below in case you're interested, not affiliated. <laughs> the other thing that I've put on here is um, the pea guttering. So the peas are all coming up, which is super exciting, but um, turns out they're very attractive to mice, which I did know. Uh, but Nick, uh, um, my British homestead, she was telling me that when the peas germinate, they let off some kind of chemical that's very attractive to mice. Um, well, clearly this has been attractive to mice because even though I covered it, they borrowed their way in and they've been kicking out and stealing <laughs> some of the peas. So I've raised it up slightly on here to see if uh, that can that can keep them off. Sweet peas are out here as well now. So I brought those out from indoors um, so that they don't get leggy. So they're getting a lot more light in here and they do not mind the cold. So this is a much nicer space to be working in now and I'm looking forward to doing some pricking out and potting on in the greenhouse. But before I can do that, I'm going to make myself do a job that I'm not always so keen on and that is pruning. Um, there are a few things that I want to do. Um, I want to have a look at the tassel tree because um, sometimes the branches scratch on my neighbour's uh, conservatory and frighten her. So I want to get some of those off. Well, frighten, annoy. Um, then I want to look at the clematis 
I don't need to look at it. I know that that needs pruning. Um, then I need to do the Buddleia. Need to do the Buddleia. I've got two Buddleias in the garden. Want to get those down as low as possible because they will just they will just grow over the summer. And the last one is the hazel tree. I have two hazel trees. So let me take you down and we'll have a look at those. This is one of my hazel trees. Um, this one is very special because uh, one of my dissertation students bought me this tree when she graduated. And um, this one, although there are some crossing over branches, so maybe I will give it a little prune. Yeah, I'm gonna prune, over, uh, prune out these ones that are crossing. Uh, but otherwise this is fine and I'm leaving it as it is. Okay, this hazel on the other hand needs a prune. It's huge. It was here obviously when I bought the house. Um, it's a nice little tree. Um, so my young one that produced nuts for the first time last year. Um, this always produces, but I don't tend to get any. The squirrels get them first. Not brilliant at pruning. Got some gear. Let's see how I get on. Okay, I think that's as good as it's going to get for now. Um, that's okay. Uh, I've got now all of this material and as I promised before something special that I want to do with this. Okay so why am I so interested in these hazel branches? I mean they're useful anyway I've used them in the past to create structures and things like that and there's quite a lot of material there so I'm sure I'll do that too strip off some of the smaller twigs and keep the sticks and uh, make use of them around the garden but there's a special purpose that I wanted the hazel in particular for this year and I need to take you back to last weekend and a little walk that Liam and I went on in the Peak District. that's the first time I think I've ever seen Scarlet Elf Cups um, out and about and uh, yeah they were amazing the, the pop of colour as you pass by um, and we saw so many little clusters of them as well that was just one um, where Liam's like how long are we going to stay here filming these mushrooms um, a long time apparently a long time um, but then as we carried on on the walk we kept seeing more and more now I didn't forage any they are edible uh, if you um, it's recommended that you cook them first though, not to eat them raw and uh, to eat them in small quantities just to see how they affect you. So they're, they're kind of um, a mushroom that's a bit on the borderline, but I've heard it tastes really amazing. But I didn't forage any, but I did bring home <laughs> one stick. And yes, I did the whole walk with my, my little Scarlet Elf cut wand. Um, and the reason that I took one stick is first of all, with all foraging, take a little, leave a lot. And I did, I only took this one little stick, but this stick is colonized with the mycelium, okay? So the um, fruiting bodies can be seen on the stick, but within the stick should be all the mycelium that then creates the mushroom. So what I would like to try and do in my garden is recreate the conditions that this was growing in. So Scarlet Elf look, cups like uh, forest floor. They like leaf litter, they like it damp, they like it shaded, and um, they also like to grow on hazel. So that <laughs> is why, because normally, you know, I would probably not prune my hazel very, um, very promptly, but because I want the wood to uh, try and get these mushrooms to colonize further, uh, I'm going to cut it up into short lengths like this, I'm going to sit this one with it. I'm going to find it a good spot in the garden where there's plenty of uh, leaf litter, make, make a little forest floor for it. 
and I'm going to see yeah, if I can get this, this growing in my garden. Now, this isn't the only mushroom that I want to get growing and not the only use of the hazel. Ready? Oh, go on then. There we go. As I was saying, it's not the only mushroom I want to grow and it's not the only reason for wanting the hazel because you may remember that I ordered a lion's mane mushroom, uh, not a mushroom kit, uh, but mushroom plugs. Now, I've had mushroom kits in the past that you grow inside. You're not on the mic, are you? No? Um, that you grow inside and had a lot of success with them. And it's so much fun. It's really great. I'll show you some of the ones um, that I've grown in the past, uh, including pink oyster mushroom and king oyster mushrooms. I did a gray oyster. I did shiitake as well. Um, and it was really fun and a really nice thing to do. However, I got the mushroom long. I got the mushroom long. So <laughs> this was uh, beginning of COVID. And I started to feel a bit woozy and um, I was having funny turns and I thought I had COVID and I went and got tested in the times that you had to go to the, some random car park somewhere and get tested by somebody. And uh, it wasn't COVID. And the more I thought about it and the more I looked into it, um, I found out that it was the mushroom kit. So when you grow mushrooms indoors in those kits, you really want them in kind of a cool area. And the coolest room in my uh, house is my bedroom. So I had my mushroom kits growing in my bedroom. Do not do this. Do not do this. Because, of course, the mushrooms release spores and you can become allergic to those spores. So when there's a large mushroom spore count um, in the air, um, sometimes I feel like chesty and, and coffee and things and it's because I have the mushroom long. I'm now allergic to uh, the spores of mushrooms, which is why I want to grow mushrooms outdoors because I still want to grow them. and I can't grow them indoors. I haven't got the right conditions for them. Now I've got the mushroom long. So I'm going to try and grow outside. Now, the lion's mane mushroom. So I bought these in plugs. I think you got 50 plugs for about 15 quid. And um, I'd been, you might remember, I'd been looking for branches on the plot. Mind the microphone. I'd been looking for branches on the plot to uh, plug them in. And um, it was only this morning that I thought, I better really research how you're supposed to do this. And um, yeah, you, you don't, don't just use a random log that you find on an allotment. Um, you need fresh wood. So you need freshly cut wood that you then season for a couple of weeks and then you drill the holes in and put the plugs for the mushrooms in. Um, and although I think oak and birch and chestnut were some of the best woods to use, um, you can also use hazel. And But you need um, a log of about 10 to 20 centimetres. <laughs> now, those are not 10 to 20 centimetres. And when I tried to get a bigger log off um, with my axe, and honestly, I should not own an axe. Um, but when I tried to use the axe to get a larger log off the uh, hazel, um, I failed. I didn't do that. You are on the microphone, Dory. That's no good. That's no good. No. Well, I have to hold you like a baby. <laughs> there we go. I'll hold you like a baby. You're still on the microphone. There we go. Um, so when I was trying, where are you looking? I'm playing dead. Hello. Hi. Uh, so when I was <laughs> trying to do this without holding a dog. Anyway, I could not chop down um, a big enough piece from the hazel tree. So I'm going to ask Liam, see if he can have a go for me. And at some point this weekend, anyway, I'm going to get, I am going to get a log of 10 to 20 centimeter diameter that I can put in the shed and season for two weeks. And then in two weeks time, we're going to inoculate it with the lion's mane fungi. In the meantime, I'm going to get some uh, smaller twigs of the hazel, bundle them up and put them together with my Scarlet Elf Cup twig. And uh, yeah. We'll, we'll see if we can get this going in the home garden.
So my next pruning job is the clematis. And I've got two, one on either side of the arch, and they meet in the middle, and they're a beautiful purple flower. They're a type three clematis, so that means you prune in February. And um, you want to prune 30 to 45 centimeters from the base, and um, ideally just above a bud. I don't see many buds, but I do see growth at the bottom, which is promising. So I'm just going to go for it. Where do you think, Dory? Well, maybe we'll go above these leafy things or those ones. Let's do those ones. Oh, <laughs> that's always a bit scary. Um, I did it last year because that was, uh, uh, it was my first year flowering last year, but I had had it in from the year before. So I have done this once before. Oh, I guess take down all the old stuff. Let's have a look on this side. This one doesn't look as healthy and it didn't grow as well. But there we go. Oh, there's a bud. Look. Oh, it is alive then. It is alive. I'm there. I'm there. Not so much on this side. So this side does look more alive than this side. Oh, well. Done it now. So what you all have gathered by that is that by pruning I meant hacking away with no skill whatsoever. And nevertheless, it's done. So I think I did all the things. So hazel, check. Made my little hazel bed for my scarlet elf cups. Uh, clematis, done. Hoping that I didn't kill off the only live part of it. Budlia, easy. Chopped down. I mean, the one behind the greenhouse that you saw me do is quite a small one anyway. You can chop it right at the base, but that one's been there for who knows how long, the nine years that I've lived here. So, um, yeah, I can't can't get to the base of that, but I just take off um, everything that's uh, the new growth off the old stump, basically. So that's done. What was my other one? Uh, the uh, tassel tree, the silk tassel tree, didn't actually need that much off of it. Um, nothing was scraping against next door's conservatory, so that was all good. That was it, really. Oh, look, the sun's just about coming about. And there is about an hour left of uh, light, but to be honest, my back is hurting now. I've still probably got to hoover the house and, um, and the dog needs a walk. So I think I might be calling it quits for tonight and uh, tomorrow we'll pick up and do the sewing. So I'll See you on the dog walk and then see you tomorrow.
<laughs> I don't know, but it's good TV. Thank you, Cam. They're fine. Look at the roots. So there's plenty of roots. Not so many this end. Oh, but they are there. Um, but only a few have actually sprouted from the top. And um, I heard this tip from Ali at the Right Pair Plot. And that is to just trim off these ends of the onions that haven't started sprouting yet. And that will encourage the sprout to come up. So that's what my first little job of the day is. Um, my second little job of the day is to do with ochre. <laughs> so those of you who've been with me for a while might know that I'm slightly obsessed with ochre. had a really good harvest of it last year, which I was thrilled about um, because they are, they're not a cheap um, crop to be growing. So in that spirit, I saved tubers this year to, um, to plant on this year. And now is the time to start chitting your ochres and this little tip I'm taking from Mayu at Spuds and Roses. Now this is the first time I've looked at my ochre since I put them away. Eek. Let's have a look. Oh they look good. They look good. Yay. How's that one at the end? Good, good. They're good. Phew, that's a relief. Um, so how many have I got? Let's have a look. Oh, and they, actually, they've already started chitting in here. Look, there we go. They've already got little chits on them. Not so, not any on the pink ones though, and the pink ones. Although um, I think Mayo said um, that she found that the yellow ones actually tasted better raw. They all taste the same, cooked like lemony potatoes. Um, but these weren't as nice raw. But they look so beautiful. I think you would uh, forgive the slightly less tastiness just for the for the colour. Um, yes, how many we've got then? I'm going to put them to chit in uh, not an egg box, looks like an egg box, but it's not. It's actually a box that um, in the supermarkets they put the tomato puree in, but they're perfect little um, holes for the ochre. Thank you. So 17 ochre in the, um, actually, which way up then should they go? Hmm. So the sprout seems to be coming out of the opposite end of the little stalky bit that must have been on the plant. So those aren't sprouted. I'm going to try and put the stalky bit at the bottom. There we go. Who knew there was a correct way around to chit an ochre? Not me. Just discovered it. That way around. So 17 ochre. That probably cost you about 20, 25 quid. Uh, I know, <laughs> crazy. Um, so yeah, so if you are growing ochre, uh, think of it as an investment. Um, you'll pay out to begin with, but then hopefully you get a good harvest. You get to save your tubers and then you can grow them on the next year. Um, now I'm going to pop these on the windowsill where my potatoes are. So it's a sunny but cool windowsill. And um, I think these, you know, they're not... May you said they're not as quite as quick to chit, so you might not notice much happening right away. But this is just giving them slight head starts so that when they go into the soil, they're going to romp away. Oh, I know what I had to show you. One sec. <laughs> I got my log. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I put Liam to work. I said, would you mind um, just trying to saw off? Uh, a great big branch from my hazel and he did and it took him like two minutes what it took me 20 minutes not to achieve yesterday say la vie um anyway so i've got this now and i'm going to put it into the shed to uh season ready to uh then plug with the mycelium the lion's mane spawn uh in a couple of weeks time but yay it's not quite not quite the diameter I wanted. I think it should be a bit thicker, but I'm hoping that um, it would just mean it colonizes it quicker if it's uh, if it's a bit thinner. But yeah, right, we're gonna put this away first. Right, my third quick job of 
the afternoon is to sow a few more broad beans so i can't remember if i showed you these yesterday i know i showed you them last week but these are my broad beans and these are all the aqua dolce so there was claudia aqua dolce and super aqua dolce and um not all have germinated <laughs> pouring the soil off into my tea um but um most have and actually the ones that haven't come up yet still appear to have some roots at the bottom so i think they'll they'll eventually catch up interestingly also have some onions coming up in here i clearly reused the compost that i didn't think some onions had come up in and uh, now they're they're companion planted with the broad beans anyway now that these ones have come up and we've got some good growth on i want to start my successions of um broad bean planting so I'm going on to my crimson flowered broad bean, which is the one that I kept behind before um, because it said um, to sow indoors from February rather than January. I did those ones in January. Did I? Yes, 8th of January. So now I'm going to do the crimson flowered, but I've also got another broad bean to sow. And this one is called Grano Violetto okay look at the purple beans um now this one has been kindly sent to me by nick nick the grief you might have seen him in the comments below in fact he sent me a lovely package of beans and peas um one which i'm really looking forward to is a runner bean with apricot flowers but this one sounds really cool too um so i'm going to sow some of these and some of the crimson flowered but because i only have one root trainer I have been saving toilet rolls. Um, so I'm going to fill up each of these toilet rolls, but rather than just stand them in a tray like I've done before, I've actually put them into cells. So it um, just gives them a little bit more support because what I find with um, sewing into toilet rolls is that the ends get soggy because you're watering them and, um, and they start to fall apart a bit. So I thought this will hold them together and then when they're ready to sew, just pop them out and straight into the ground so it doesn't matter if the cardboard's disintegrating a little bit but damn it i was one toilet shot one toilet roll short oh well okay so i'm going to fill these with compost and then sow some more broad beans so that'll be all my uh quick jobs done then and um then i'm going to go on to a nice sunday afternoon job which is pricking out and potting on Welcome back. Um, you may not have realised it, but we've just had a break. I've pricked out all the uh, lettuce. So I had um, Marvel of Four Seasons and what was the other one? Bronze Beauty and The Rocket. So all of those have been pricked out now and put in their own individual cells. Big tray of it. I had a few rocket left and I've stuck them into the greenhouse salad bar. So we'll see if they take in the ground. Now I want to get this last job done pretty quick because the well the temperature has plummeted. So when I came in here it was 23.3 degrees Celsius. It's now over half that, so it's 10.8 Celsius at the moment. It's got quite breezy, there's been a few spots of rain, it's gone quite dark. So the reason I want to get this done quick is because it's one of the warm loving uh, crops. It's the peppers and the aubergine. So I brought them out, um, but I don't want to put them into cold compost and shock them. So I'd already filled some trays and um, I've had these inside the house um, just soaking up a little bit of water, uh, room temperature water. So hopefully I'm not going to do anything that's going to damage these seeds. But I want to get them pricked out. I particularly want to get these aubergines pricked out because they're looking a little bit floppy, a little bit leggy. And in part, it's because um, I don't think I buried the seed quite deep enough. So um, they, they've not got much um, anchorage, 
I would say. Anyway, we'll get these. Uh, yeah, that one's no good. Look, that's a dead one. Dead one. What were you? Check. Check early aubergine. OK, only three of those now. Um, I didn't get any of the long purple didn't germinate. Now that is saved seed. That was um, part of my seed Santa from Grow Bus Greenhouse. But I'm going to give them another go. And I've actually already put on um, the long purple aubergine um, and two chilies to uh, soak. So um, the chilies that I sowed before, to be honest, um, and the sweet peppers, I think I, um, I think I cooked them. I think they got too hot on the heat mat and dried out and got a bit cooked. So nothing germinated and I sort of gave up and thought I'll just try again. So they are soaking. So I've done um, Big Jim chilli and the Chinese five colour chilli. So I'm giving those another go. But in the meantime, I'm pr uh, pricking these out, putting them into our own cells and then they'll go back indoors uh, under the grow lights and in the warmth. Right, that's the chilies and aubergines done and pop back inside. Um, there's one more thing uh, that I want to do today and that's sow another seed. Um, this is a flower seed, it's straw flowers. I'm starting them early because they do take a while to germinate. These need warmth to germinate so I'm going to do them indoors uh, but they don't need additional heat so they don't have to go in the propagator or uh, on the heat mat so they'll just be um, at room temperature. The other thing to remember with straw flowers is they need light to germinate. So I'm going to sow them on the surface of the soil. And I think what I'll probably do now that I've got some is just a sprinkling of vermiculite on top to try and keep the moisture in. I haven't had enormous amounts of luck with straw flowers. I think I managed to get three in the end last year. And then one started flowering right at the end of the year. It's actually still in that corner, just slowly dying away. Um, but um, they are gorgeous and they're beautiful to dry. And what I really wanted to do with them last year is make uh, Christmas decorations with them, which I didn't quite get to do with my three that I think I picked a little too late. So the yellow centre had just started showing and um, I dried them in the shed, which I think actually wasn't dry enough. And uh, they slightly moulded in the centre, which would not have looked pretty on the Christmas tree. So they never quite made it. But I'm determined to have another go and do better this year. Um, I'm doing them early as well because this is old seed. And I think you are advised to have fresh seed for straw flowers. So I'm going to sow everything that's left in this packet and it gives me time, if nothing comes up, to do another sowing because I have got a fresh pack of seed as well. But what I would really like to do this year is like have a bed of straw flowers as like a cutting bed. Um, so I'm going to need quite a few. So I'm going to sow all this seed and um, probably even if these do come up, I'll do a second sowing of the fresh seed as well. Right, so I need um, some compost. Uh, they are really tiny seeds, so I think I will sieve my compost for these. Okay, so I've uh, just leveled out the surface. This is peat-free compost. It's a mix of the silver grow and plant grow. It's got some perlite in. It's also got some um, coir in there as well, which is basically what I've been using to um, sow everything today or pot on everything today. Um, right, there's quite a few still left in here, so I'm going to actually, what I think I'll do <laughs> is just dampen the surface first. Because the compost is fairly damp anyway, but uh, because I'm not doing a covering of compost on them, you want them to stick to the surface so it's good to have some moisture. Right, and I'm just going to sprinkle, she says. Maybe I'll put it into my hand first. They look, 
there's hardly anything to these seeds. They're very tiny and they look like uh, little pellets, tiny, tiny pellets. Yeah, I'm not too worried about sowing thickly because um, I'm not sure how many will germinate. That is quite thick. <laughs> okay, All right, I'm going to make sure they're in contact with the soil. Try not to take too many with me on with my fingers. Go. And then a little sprinkling of vermiculite over the top. Okay, all done, and they're going to go inside. I've got my label. There we go. Straw flowers, 28th of the second. Let's see if we get better luck this year. So my final job of the day is to sow the aubergine and chilli seeds that are soaking in the kitchen. Um, they haven't had that long soaking yet, so I want to give them a bit longer. I've prepared the seed tray for them and I put that inside the house so that it's keeping warm. And I think I'll sow those either just before bed or first thing in the morning. If you want to see how I sow my chilli seeds and why I soak them, check out this video and I shall catch you next week. Take care.